or did they just want to pillage it and get back on the road? I think column A, column B, man. Those bikers didn't give a damn about anything, boy. Let me tell you. Yeah, they did. They not. got Feeney in there. They were those those. That's like he said. Yeah, these are. It's a professional gang, <laughs> professional army. Who makes some very dumb decisions. But I, I love that aspect because I think Romero included that to just show the yeah. gore and the absurdity of all of that. And I think the director's cut, they spend about seven minutes stealing jewelry. Like they, they show right. the, the bikers stealing stuff for seven minutes. And it's so absurd because they're just stealing. Like the guy grabs a TV. Like they're looting a place. And someone goes, <laughs> what are you, you going to do with that TV? And the that's guy's right. like, oh, yeah. That's right. They ain't nothing on it. Yeah, he slips, yeah, give right. me the thing, and he bashes it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, your article in particular on uh, the blood pressure. Yeah. Uh, the guy tried. I mean, I found that to be a groundbreaking piece of uh, journalism right there. And it perfectly points to what you're saying. Why are these guys stealing things that you. Why, well, hey, you know what would be great? If I could steal a four finger ring. What the hell, man? It's the zombie apocalypse, yo. You're not going to run into Radio Rahim. What's happening? <laughs> I think you just get work. Like, they didn't even go for much food. They didn't go for water. No, they didn't steal any food. One guy stole a whole bunch of lollipop. (laughs) Can you, you know, this is what Tom Hanks ran into in Castaway. He had that uh, tooth problem and he had to take that tooth out. Can you imagine you survive the zombie apocalypse? You shoot 400,000 zombies and then you get killed because you got a gum disease. Your gingivitis flared up for the last time because you ate lollipops during the zombie apocalypse. How ridiculous would that be? How ridiculous would that be? I mean, that's kind of the way I'd like to go. So let's say we're yeah. on the road for 15 years, right? We start off with yeah. 1,000 people. 15 years later, we're down to 150. You know, you and I, okay. like, we're world-weary. We've been across the United States. We've killed thousands of zombies. We've killed hundreds of people. We're, we're just uh-huh. we're just rip-roaring badasses rolling across the United States. That's and it. I survive everything, and then I just kick it. You're like, what happened to Mark? Tooth infection. Everyone would just Tooth laugh. Infection. Everyone would laugh. Like, yeah, exactly. Be like, listen, like I was neck. We rode motorcycles every day for 15 years together. But I don't really miss him because I think it's pretty great that he died of a tooth infection. That's right. Plus, now I get to eat all his tootsie pops. <laughs> Whatever it is, I think I see. And then five years later, that's how you go. <laughs> and then, right? Five years later, I die because oh, this paper cut. I just didn't get it looked at. God damn. <laughs> how did Norbert this... go down? Paper cut. <laughs> yeah, this is the horror. That people don't remember. Their life without basic antibiotics, man. People just used to die. People just used to die <laughs> of stupid things, man. Ah, uh, you know, I'm walking down the beach. Ow, I cut my toe. Two weeks later, he's dead. Done. Like, people used to die from this, man. <laughs> Let yeah. alone the zombie apocalypse. And so not only do they have that, but they're, like, they're robbing <laughs> zombies. That's right. Jesus That's Christ. right. I also love it that takes- Savini and uh, Sasso, uh, Tasso, the two guys who did a lot of the work on all the makeup yeah. effects and zombies, and he just painted zombies' faces gray, which photographed weird, which he admits. But I love that they mm. played Blade and Sledge, the two main bikers. Like, I love it. Yeah, of course, man. And Savini's got that that awesome mustache yeah. that it just never, never ceases to be out of style. And then he comes back in Land of the Dead as that zombie from no. the Dawn of the Dead. No, yes. he doesn't. Dude, watch Land of the Dead again. They give him a full, I'm going to say, 10 seconds where he comes out after, you know, they've done their zombie thing and smashed through the barricade, he absolutely still got his machete, and he cuts, he grabs a guy by the neck and whoosh, cuts down. Whoa. As the zombie, straight up. The first recurring zombie in the Romero verse, man. That makes me so happy. I also love that there's an Argento in it, and Johnny Legs got a big role in it. <laughs> I love John Which one is Johnny Legs again? John Leg- he's, uh, oh, that's oh, Land of the Dead. I thought yeah. you were talking about Land of the Dead. Dead. Right. I, I, yeah. I, John, Johnny Legs, man. That guy gets God. he needs bigger roles. Listen, listen. I want I, him and Walty Goggies to get Walton Gog. I call him Walty Goggies to get in a movie. Yo, Johnny Legs and Walty Goggies. Uh, yeah, I would let them absolutely just read the phone book to me at would, all times. Would you, you throw know? in any P Dubs, Patrick Wilsons? Yeah. Because because Walton Goggins. Josephine Lewis, thirteen seventy five East Orange Tree Road, two one two six five eight seven three two nine. They like Osamo. No, no, no. Quiero, quiero. Eh, hey, dímelo, dímelo, dímelo. Pa. Hey, hey. We got the uh, Walter Rodriguez, uh, two seven five. No, I'm just kidding. Well, not Leguizamo. on the mouth. Um, <laughs> not on the mouth. Misbehaving. With the, <laughs> I love in Ant Man the Wasp when 
Paul Rudd's like, I'm looking for a Southern gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's, that's really what he was. Yeah, well, so I, great. yeah, I love some multi goggies. But yeah, back to Dawn of the Dead. Uh, back. Th- this movie could only have been made. Like, I love how Romero was. He was unpredictable in his career. He made Night of the Living Dead. Out of mm. no, it's just him and a bunch of Pittsburgh people who shot commercials together. They shot that movie. Mm-hmm. They made mm-hmm. a couple other movies. And then Argento flies him out to Italy in Rome. He locks him up mm-hmm. in a beautiful penthouse. He writes the script, and then they go have dinner every night. Nice. Comes back to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, all of Pittsburgh just goes, we love you, Romero. The mall lets him do, do whatever he wants at night as long as they put everything That's back. Right. All, yep. He hires all these young kids from Pittsburgh or just young people who are hungry. They're probably getting paid peanuts. Extras got paid a dollar in snacks. It's just a, <laughs> everyone Sick. united around this movie. No one was sleeping. You know, the hours in the film industry can be insane, but everyone that I hear who worked on this movie, they were just, it was glorious. We we worked, mm. we had a playground. We shot, and I guess what Romero would do with his DP, director of photography, uh, Michael mm. Gornick, he would just say, hey, man, like there's like three zombies over there, and you're going to point your camera and shoot them. And then he would disappear, mm. and he'd come back five minutes later. Hey, man, you ready? So he trusted all these people. He yeah. Like, his production manager, she went and got the Pittsburgh or like the what P- Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the mm-hmm. their National Guard to shoot all these scenes. So they all just showed up mm-hmm. in costume and did some acting. And he just but That's he sent awesome. a first time production manager out to do that. So he seems like he really trusted these people. They loved him for it. The town loved yeah. him. I mean, just the gore for this movie in what seventy eight. I was reading Ebert's review and he's like, he does it yeah. on purpose. Like he he knows yeah. what he's doing. But yeah. ten years prior it was Night Living Dead and the gore was next level in this film. And and the thing about it is when they're when the zombies are eating those poor burnt up kids in the first movie, it's in black and white. They're using chocolate syrup and what looks like, you know, pig guts and just, you know, tearing the bone off of giant turkey legs, whatever. But it it's so visceral, man. There's something that you that you can't fake that look of teeth tearing meat off of something, you know, because you remember when you were eating that steak and that one little piece, you just, uh, you had to gnaw. Oh my God. Nothing, nothing was like that in 1968, 69. Yeah. Oh yeah. 68. Uh, And then I also love when, oh, say, did I say 70? My bad. Uh, oh, no, 78. Dawn of the dead. Dawn of the dead. 78. Yeah. And then day, night of living dead. 68. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, also, in the beginning of this movie, when they're in the uh, like uh, the apartment block or tower block, and that yes. man walks up to his wife or girlfriend and just what bites her neck off, like bites Miguelito, his... yeah, Miguelito, and yeah, <laughs> gets a hold of her neck and just rips it off. And I remember, I, mm. I I saw this movie. I came I came upon this movie pretty late, right? I was about nineteen when I saw it. I, I that weekend, I I had watched. I was like, I gotta catch up on movies, so I watched Requiem for a Dream, Clockwork Orange. I put myself in a horrible spot, and I, I capped him off with this. And I what? just remember, I, I was—I'm I, telling you, dude, I was in a bad spot for like three days. I was about to say, did you just did you just break up with your girlfriend and and rediscover quaaludes? What's happening, son? Huh? Well, you Damn. know me. You, I mean, that's every weekend, but. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I just my God, when the flesh was being ripped, and when those people were in the basement eating bodies they had been stored down there and then they were getting headshotted and yeah, th- then the one police officer murder kills himself I mean, it's yeah. just yeah man yeah. The, the first the first 10 minutes of that movie are not for the faint-hearted and you know oh man my kid just graduated college i feel like celebrating let's watch the original dawn of the dead no no not really <laughs> not really because this is not a movie that is made for hey the heroes are going to survive. Everything's going to be okay. The original ending was actually going to end with, spoiler alert, Ken Forey shooting himself in the head after after Roger comes back, you know, and just, and just uh, the I forgot the lady's name. Francine. Thank you. And just Francine flying off by herself. She sticks but her Romero head in the helicopter was, blades. Oh, that's right. She was going to kill herself too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Remember when she stood out of the helicopter and the blades yeah. going? She was going to like just pop up her head like she was going to groundhog it. Into the blade. Right, right, right. Because that's what happened to the zombie earlier in the movie that tried to creep on her. She couldn't hear. And the zombie was creeping up on her. And he got his head cut off. Yeah, the movie was going to end where everybody kills himself. And thanks for shopping. By the way, zombies win. I'm George Romero. It was just, oof, Jesus. And then the ending, the ending that we get, that's not a happy ending, is it? No. 
How much gas do we have? <laughs> we'll get a few miles. We'll fly yeah, far we're... enough for the motorcycle gang to ca- catch up to us again. Yeah. Uh, it's not. Yeah, for... But I think by that time, Romero said this movie's kind of a romp. And, mm. I mean, the beginning's most certainly not a romp. But not when they all. get in the mall at the, you know, the pie fight, the water spritzing, stealing from them, it becomes this larger-than-life film. And so I guess he didn't want to build all that and then kill people. Because you, yeah. you bond with these four. When he kills Roger, when he shoots Roger, you feel it. And Roger, I, I don't know why, but that visual of Roger in that little cart putting on a hat has stuck with yeah. me for so long. Because it's pathetic, man. Yeah, and and he's and he's really enjoying. What was he eating? Like olives or something? Yep. He's, he's, he's like these are the greatest olives he's ever had in his entire life, and it's because he's he's high on morphine, and his leg is putrefying. And it's just the worst, man. But he's like, before I die, I'm going to be able to take full advantage of the Monroeville Mall. Yeah, kill yourself, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then and then he's laying he's laying there. I'm sorry, man. He's laying there in his arms. He's like. I don't want to be walking around like that. You make sure to take care of it. Don't let me come back like that. It's so creepy. And it's Roger creepy. Roger takes care of it. No, uh, Peter takes care of it. No, Peter. Peter? Peter? Yeah, Roger, I hear you, man. Oh, yeah, man. Roger. All right, fly boy. But- <laughs> but when, when they're driving around the mall in the car, there's like a weird freedom to it too. It's a very mm. when they're locking the doors, it's very yes. I don't know, man. The ex, it's exhilarating, is it not? It the scene, it's 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 really intense because yeah. you you assume that a typical mall, especially a mall that size, you figure that mall's got four thousand, ten thousand people when it's running at capacity, and except these are all zombies, yeah. and it's just the four of them. And so they're really jumping around. Hoo, ha, hoo. Yeah, the zombies are slow, but there's so many. I freaked out as a kid watching this, man. As many times as I knew what was going to happen. Oh, man. that And that little car, I swear, I always wish it was a DeLorean instead of a hatchback. Oh, my goodness. That'd be sweet. <laughs> that would have been sweet as... Oh, did you, did you hear about how they got that car? The production manager went to a dealership, Volkswagen dealership, and they just gave her a hatchback, mm-hmm. and they turned it in all dinked up and ban- like banged up because they got into some accidents in it. <laughs> yeah. Of course they did, man. Isn't that like? Of course they did. Like, I feel bad for that dealership. Oh yeah, for that Romero picture, sure. And then they bring it back. Well, you know. Yeah. It's a Pittsburgh totally, movie. Man. Get over no, yourself. Totally. But this, look, man, Pittsburgh represent. I just love. I don't know. I I just dig that the town wanted to be a part of this. I mean, mm. also the crazy thing about this movie is they shot nights. So yeah, shooting in this they mall shot until at night, five a.m. It's cr- I, nights are so tough, man. I did two nights. I did two weeks of nights one time, and I just thought I was a different human being. I mean, they were in this mall every night for months. It was really intense, but eh? The town was still just saying, we want like, we want to be zombies. We want to get shot. We want to be in this. We'll show up for a dollar. And I like well, that. It's, it's that the, the first movie was what? $200,000? $250,000? And was the, the, the highest gross in independent film all, of all time until, what, Deep Throat? Something like that? Yeah. <laughs> like forever and then Blair forever, Witch and what like, Paranormal and, and Activity Blair Witch. right right so it's not like it, it, this guy comes up and says hey I'm gonna shoot a zombie movie it was, people are like zombies whatever they're like oh my god this is the sequel to Night of Living Dead hell yeah hell yeah I'll pay you let me be in this movie yeah absolutely do you think Romero had a self-destructive streak so he turned down Hollywood uh, he, and then he yeah. didn't immediately follow this up he made Marty and Knight Riders which both, you know, both didn't do well. And then he came back, made Day of the Dead. That tanked. Do you think that he had a... But do you think that's who he was and he wasn't going to change and that helped him be make classics? Or do you think he had a bit of a self-destructive side? There are people who want their work to be done in a certain way. They want their movies to have a certain look, a certain feel. And then they take it to the studio and, oh, you got to chop it up. No, you got to do this. You you look at George Romero smoking all them cigarettes from New York City, New York. You think he's going to put his movie in some test screening, let a bunch of people from the ages of 20 to 42 tell him, oh, the scene where Roger is eating the olive, why isn't he eating a Jolly Rancher? You think he's going to be down? Hell no. You look at that man, grizzly voice, just chain smoking cigarettes. Yeah. He got his vision, and he's one of those guys where I'm going to find that money. I'm going to find that money. I don't need you to hell with Hollywood. I'm going to put this movie together the way I want. And he was, he was always brilliant for it. I think he really helped Pittsburgh 
And I, I, yeah. I, I think his, you know, Knight Riders we covered on the 